Okay. Okay. All right. Praise God. Well, we thank God for uh, this time of Bible study. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to come boldly before your throne. And Father God, I pray that, Lord God, you will allow me to decrease so you might increase. Father God, that you might speak through these lips of clay. Father God, that you might, Lord God, teach this Bible study and not me. Father, for it's by your anointing, O oh God, that yokes are destroyed. Lord God, I pray for my dear brother, Jabron, there in Pakistan, him and his family. I pray, dear God, for your strength over his life. I pray for the anointing to continue over his life. Father God, that, Lord, you would use him, Lord God, for signs and wonders in his generation, Father, and in his community, in his country. Father God, I pray that you raise up his children, Lord God, to be, Lord God, as arrows in the hand of the mighty. Father God, that, Lord God, his children, Lord God, will love you and serve you. And Father God, defeat the enemy through their obedience and by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. I pray for his wife, Lord God, for her wellness, for her health. Oh God, I pray, Lord God, that you keep her blood sugar regulated, Lord God, her blood pressure. Father God, I pray, Lord God, Father God, for her health and for her to start taking, Lord God, control over her health. Lord, we rebuke the spirit of infirmity. We rebuke the spirit of sickness and disease. And Father God, we speak forth health for your word, Lord God, is health to all of our flesh and marrow to our bones. So Father God, I thank you today, Lord God, for this time of Bible study. And Lord God, we ask again, Lord God, that you take control over this lesson. Oh, Father God, and you let your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, bring open the eyes of our understanding that we would have revelation knowledge, oh God, of who you are, of you, Lord God, and not about you, but an understanding and revelation, oh God. Let the revelation of God come off of the pages of this holy book, Father God, and into our hearts and minds tonight, oh God. Father God, for that is what will bring us closer to you, Lord God, that we might know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So thank the Lord for this day that he has made. Praise be to God. I um, want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the Our Father's Prayer and the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, let's go to uh, a scripture. Praise God. We're going to turn to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Yes. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20 and 21. All right, I'm going to grab it here and, and read it out loud. Praise the Lord. This uh, has been just resonating in my spirit all morning. As I was praying this morning, uh, it just was resonating so greatly in my spirit. The um, Our Father's Prayer and at the point of uh, when Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Uh, here at verse 20, um, Jesus spoke to the disciples about the coming of the kingdom. And this is what he said. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, here or lo there, meaning neither shall they say, look here or look there. For behold, he said, for look, understand, the kingdom of God 
is within you. Amen. And so we see uh, that um, Jesus let them let the Pharisees know that uh, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, but uh, the kingdom of God is within us. And so uh, another scripture that uh, we want to point out is the scripture of the Lord's Prayer. Praise be to God in Matthew's chapter 6 and verse 10. Matthew's chapter 6 and verse 10. Um, actually, we can go uh, and read the entire uh, portion of the Our Father's Prayer. And it says, uh, Jesus began to tell his disciples to take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you do your alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That your alms, meaning your gifts as you give to people, may be in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward you openly. And then he went on to say, and when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. He said, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, you shall not use vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But be not therefore like unto them, for your father know what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, pray you, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on in earth as it is in heaven. And as I began to meditate and read out this, or actually uh, memorize, I was speaking this prayer this morning, and the Lord began to tell me that in the book of Genesis, that the Lord wanted to bless his people so much he said that you would be so blessed that your life would be as heaven on earth. Amen. As heaven on earth. Uh, we would, we would uh, say that in heaven, there is no sickness. In heaven, there is no lack. In heaven, there is no turmoil. But there's peace in heaven. The Bible says that... Uh, 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 righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is within us in that we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, as we talked about on last week. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the kingdom of God. God began to tell his disciples, uh, well, actually he used P Paul to tell them that uh, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let's let's uh, let's get that scripture, and that scripture is Second Peter, Amen. One, Second, yeah. Second Peter, chapter one, and verse three, Amen. And it says that His divine power has given unto us uh, everything that we need for a godly life and knowledge of him who called us by his glory and his goodness. 
the King James Version reads it like this. Uh, let, let's get it. According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. You know, someone once said that I can't have or be uh, uh, someone that I don't know that I am. You must know who you are and whose you are and what you possess and what is rightfully yours in order to possess it. There is one of my uh, women daughters, one of my daughters in the Lord here in the U.S. who uh, would always speak negatively about her life because of she was speaking what she saw. But I began to teach her that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have the kingdom of God within you. You know, the, God brought the kingdom to earth through Christ Jesus. The Bible says that the mystery of the Godhead was God in Christ, amen, reconciling the world unto himself, amen. So the kingdom of God came among men. The kingdom of God walked among men. Did he walk among men and leave them in the state that they were in? Did he walk among men and leave those that were sick, sick? those that were experiencing the curse of the law? Did he walk among men and leave them in that curse? No, the kingdom of God was in Christ Jesus and came to this earth to heal the sick, to open the blinded eyes, to raise the dead, amen. So God was bringing a part of his kingdom to earth through the works of Jesus Christ. Now, what is God telling us? Now, if Jesus did that when he was in the flesh, God has said that he sent us. The Bible gives us the great commission in the book of Matthew's 28th chapter, where Jesus gave the charge. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Was that commission just for the 12 disciples? Was that commission just for the 120 in the upper room? No, that commission was for you and I. Jesus said, I pray not for those who are here, but I pray also for those who believe their words. Amen. So we are of that generation that believed the words of the apostles. And so Jesus has engrafted us into this family and has put the kingdom of God within us through the power of the Holy Ghost. So through that power, we have been ordained, we have been sent just like Jesus was sent to bring the kingdom of God on earth. Jesus told the disciples, he said, when you go out, go out and buy twos. Let there be at least two of you going out and spreading the gospel. And when you enter into a house, he said, tell them that the kingdom of God has come unto them. How can you tell them that the kingdom of God has come unto them if the kingdom of God is not in you? The kingdom of God is within you and I. And when we go out, we are spreading that kingdom to the world. We are bringing forth the very essence of heaven. What heaven has, if heaven has no lack, then we bring no lack. We bring abundance. We bring empowerment. We bring joy. We bring peace. We bring righteousness to those that we minister to. So God is wanting the church of the living God in this day and hour to know who they are and whose they are and who dwells and what dwells on the inside of them. The kingdom of God come not with observation for the kingdom of God is within you. 
So in my prayer for that Our Father's Prayer, I began to pray and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants earth to look like heaven. He wants earth to be invaded with righteousness. So we are to speak and preach the word of God so that men and women will know what righteousness looks like. Amen. Righteousness Amen. is obedience to the word of God. Righteousness is faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and him dwelling on the inside of us. For he is our righteousness. And because he lives in us, he works through us. Amen. He works not only Amen. through us, but he works in us. He works in us to sanctify us, to make us holy, to make us uh, uh, walk worthy of this calling. It's not any doing of our own, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit as we yield to him and say, Lord God, let your kingdom come first in me and then on earth as it is in heaven. First in me. I receive the righteousness of God, which is Christ Jesus. First in me, the kingdom of God, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. So uh, let's get that, that, that scripture. Let's get that scripture where Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. That's in the book of John chapter 14. John. Chapter 14 and verse 27. And Jesus said, uh, 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 this is what he said here. I'll bring it, read it in the New King James. Peace I leave with you. He said, I'm going to leave my peace with you. How did he leave that peace with us? Well, he left that peace with us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Because that is the only thing he left with us was the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. You see, the world gives a false peace. A world gives a peace that uh, if everything is going well, uh, people feel at peace. But the Bible says they'll say peace and safety and then sudden destruction. What do they have when everything goes wrong? What do they have when, when the economy has gone bad? They have no peace, but we still have peace because we have the peace giver on the inside. He said, I give you my peace, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Isn't it, a, isn't it amazing that he said, let not your heart. You can let your heart be troubled or you can let not your heart be troubled. You can have peace by trusting in the word of God that he said he would feed us even in the time of famines. You can have peace in believing in the word God that he said, I will be a, a enemy to your enemy and no weapon formed against you will prosper. We can have peace when we trust in the words of God. So he wants that kingdom to dwell in us, that kingdom of righteousness, that kingdom of peace, and that kingdom of joy. He said we would have joy unspeakable and full of glory. L let's get that scripture. That, let's get that word here, uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peter brought it out, 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8, and verse 8, verse number 8, okay, Peter began to say, whom having not seen, let, let, let's get the whole, uh, let's get the whole chapter here, because uh, he's talking about Jesus, see, Jesus is all that we need. A lot of people see people with all kinds of problems and, and they want to send them to the doctor. They want to send them to the psychiatrist. But Jesus is all that we need. Trust me. 
because when when the days when he walked the earth, there was no psychiatrist to to take care of that demonic man that was on the 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 island of Gethsemane. There was only Jesus. He didn't call the psychiatrist to to give that man any medication to calm him down, to stop him from cutting himself and to stop him from crying out in the tombs. No, Jesus cast out those spirits and that man was made whole. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to start at the third verse. Peter said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, God has begotten us again. We were born once, but now we're born again of the water and of the spirit. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope. This hope is not a dead hope. This hope is not a, a solemn and a sad hope. It's a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. And it not only raises us from the dead, but it gives us and puts us in an inheritance, an inheritance that's incorruptible, meaning it will not fade away. It will not wash away. It will not uh, dissolve. It is incorruptible and undefiled. There's nothing wrong with it. There's, there's no line that needs to be deleted. And it does not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you and I, the Bible says, who are kept. Not only is it reserved, but God is keeping us by the power of God. We are kept. We're kept in this way. We're kept. Our mind is kept because we keep it on Jesus. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So he keeps us through the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in these last times. You see, God wants to reveal the kingdom through you and I. He wants to reveal righteousness. He wants to reveal peace. And he wants to reveal joy to the world because they have none of those. And he wants to reveal that through you and I. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, the Bible says, if need be, I love this verse because it, it explains why we go through what we go through. Because only God knows if it need to happen. He said, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, through many temptations, that the trial of your faith, uh, uh, which um, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Here it is right here. Whom, having not seen, remember what Jesus told Nathaniel? Remember what he told the disciples? He said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Amen. We have not seen Jesus yet, but we love him, Peter said. In whom through, uh, though now ye see him not, yet believing, yet because you haven't seen him yet believing, Peter said, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Glory be to God. Our faith in Christ Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us, gives us righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I tell you, God, in God, I have more joy than I ever had in my life. And only through faith. I, I, only through faith. I have not seen him. I have not touched him like Thomas did. But through faith, I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the Bible says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. 
So the kingdom of God in us, God wants us to take that to unbelievers. And when we go to them, Jesus said, you are to tell them that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Amen. And if you go into a house, you tell that house, you speak to those people, peace be unto you. And if the peace of God is not there, that peace returns back into your bosom. Glory be to God. We give God praise that in the Our Father's Prayer, amen, as we pray and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, but first in me, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise yes. God. Thank you, sister. Amen. Amen. 